Hello everyone, this is Genuine Polish, and first off, welcome back, and thank you guys so much for a thousand subscribers. That's absolutely amazing. I can't believe I made it by the end of the year. Uh, I gotta think about something I can do to get back to you guys. Right now, I'm kind of super hella broke, so uh, I'll think of something, but uh, it might take a while. So in this video, we are going to be talking about automation. We're just going to cover it real fast for new people and to teach you the ins and outs of it, so that way you can kind of better use it in your personal base just to optimize the flow of things. So let's get started. So first off for the basics, we have an automation wire and an automation ribbon. The automation wire has the ability to carry only one signal on a line, and the ribbon wire can carry four signals. They function exactly the same, except for the ribbon wire carries more signals in a smaller space. It's just used for more complex builds where if your base is super flooded with all these different pipes and gas and wires, it just helps things keep organized. It does take a little bit more setup though. You're gonna need ribbon writers, which takes one input signal and assigns it to a single bit on that wire and then transfers it down the line. And at the end of the line, you'll need ribbon readers to read each one of those individual bits. You can tell which bit either a writer or reader is selected to by looking at it. It'll display one, two, three, or four dots and then you can look at this little triangle shape and see which of the four bits are either enabled or disabled. So next we're gonna cover inputs. Now there is a lot of inputs and we're just gonna burn through them real fast. Just to give you guys a quick little description of what each one of them does and how you can use them. So first off, we have the Atmo sensor. It measures the ambient gas that's in the room. This can just be used to control the flow of gas so that way you don't have an overpressure system or you don't have a pump running when you don't need it. Because you don't want a pump running when there's only one gram of gas in that room. It's gonna be wasting its efficiency. This is really useful in setups like SPOM specifically, and you'll see them in pretty much every kind of gas sensitive build. Next up, we have a hydro sensor, which is pretty much exactly the same. It just measures the amount of liquid on that specific tile, and it's a really useful tool for controlling liquid flow. After that, we have the two timer sensors. We have the timer sensor, which measures in seconds, and then the cycle sensor, which which measures in percentage of total cycle, which is kind of confusing. So I'd recommend just using the timer. Next up, we have the water sensor, measures the amount of water that passes through a wire. Moving on. After that, we have the gas element sensor and the liquid element sensor. These things are exactly the same. They measure the liquid or gas that is on that specific tile, not in a pipe. We'll cover those later. After that, we have the germ sensor, which just measures the amount of germs that is on that specific tile. Next up, we have the radiation sensor, which measures the specific amount of radiation on that tile itself. Uh, there's not a lot of good uses for this one because you can kind of get a pretty clear idea of how much radiation is being output by machines or from cosmic radiation. It doesn't really change that much, but it does exist for really fine-tuned builds. After that, we have the rad bolt sensor, and this just measures the amount of rad bolts that pass directly over the sensor. It's not entirely the most useful sensor, but if you combine this with a signal counter so that it'll count how many rad bolts pass over that sensor, it can be used in a system like that to just give you a reminder to launch your rocket and so you're not gonna be wasting rad bulls by just shooting it at a wall or something. Next up, we have the critter sensor. The important thing to note about this is it's not a range. It'll just count the amount of critters or eggs in the entire room. So if you don't have a closed room that you're containing your critters in, it'll just count everything that's in the open space. So it is kind of useful for critter farms, but because a lot of critter farms rely on the room being open, so that way you don't have any kind of cramped conditions, it's not the most useful sensor for sure. Next up, we have the weight plate. This is pretty cool because you can configure it to activate when duplicates step on it or when critters step on it or even when food or an item is delivered to it so you can set this to a really specific weight and that way you know you have food on the far side of your base so in case someone's over there and starts to starve they have access to food but you don't want to just dump food over there because maybe it's going to spoil really fast or something and you don't just want to dump all your food over there so it's a nice easy way to control the flow of conveyor belts or access to rooms or anything like that. It's a pretty nifty sensor. I will admit that it doesn't have that many applications in it. I use it in my Morb farm and you can check out the video in the description below if you'd like to see it. Next up, we have the most simple input and probably the first one you build. It's just a basic manual switch. You have to micromanage this, of course, but this is a really cool fail safe because no matter what is going on, it doesn't matter if none of your conditions are satisfied, you can just really quickly instantly shut a machine off or close the door or anything like that. It's really useful just to throw these all around. It's a lot more convenient than using electrical switches because electrical switches could shut off an entire line of machines, whereas a automation switch can be configured to only shut off a specific machine in case something happens like an overload or the temperature gets too hot. Next up, we have the duplicate motion sensor. This thing's pretty simple. It just sends a green signal when a duplicate is within range of it. Uh, you can combine this with a signal counter, except for it doesn't know which way the duplicates are moving, so it's kind of hard to use that to control any kind of system. Next up, we have pipe-specific sensors. These are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go into too much depth. There's gas and liquid, and for each of them, there's an element sensor, which when the selected element is in that pipe, it'll send a green signal, and when it's not, it'll send a red signal. And then there's a germ sensor, which just measures a certain threshold of germs, sends a red or green signal, depending on that. 
And then lastly is the thermo sensor and it just measures the amount of temperature that's in a pipe. This is really useful for bypass systems. So that way, if you have an aqua tuner set up and you're like running water through it, you don't run the risk of that water becoming ice and breaking the pipe and then maybe breaking a vacuum or something like that. So it's a really useful tool for temperature controlled systems. Next up, we have the space scanner, which can be used to measure meteor showers or duplicate made ballistics, which include rockets. So these things have two important factors, scan quality, which is how well that specific scanner is performing, and then scan network quality, which is how much information it's actually taking in and how accurate it'll be. So when you have one working at full capacity, you'll know when something is incoming between 30 seconds and 200 seconds, which is a pretty big window. The issue with this is you can put a whole bunch of them side by side because then it'll obstruct the ones next to it and it'll decrease the overall scan network quality. And besides that, they have a really big cone of space exposure that they need to actually get 100% scan quality. So these are kind of cool and they might have good practical uses, but because you're gonna be sacrificing space that you might use for like solar panels or rockets or something, it's probably not worth it to build these. I'm just being honest. All right, next up we have our controllers or our logic gates. These are super important. They compare signals. That's all they do is they take two or more input signals and then compare those and then create an output signal. That's all it is. First off, we have a not gate or an inverter. This takes a single signal and then outputs the opposite. So a red signal to green signal, super simple. Second, we have an AND gate. This requires both of the signals to be green in order to output a green signal. Otherwise, they'll be red. So if you have one green, one red, it'll be red. If you have two reds, it'll be red. Simple. Next up, we have an OR gate. This is an every and anything kind of gate. So if there's one green signal, it's a green output. If there's two green signals, it's a green output. If it's the other green signal, it's a green output. The only time it has a red output if it's all red signals. Next up, we have the XOR gate or exclusive OR gate. This is very simple. It only sends a green output when there is one and only one green input. So if there's two green inputs, red signal. If there's two red inputs, red signal. If there's one green, no matter which one it is, it's going to be a green output. Pretty simple. Next up, we have a NAND gate, which is the opposite of an AND gate. So every signal for an AND gate that would normally output a red signal is going to output a green signal. So if there's one green input, it's a green signal. If there's two red inputs, it's a green signal. If there's two green inputs, it's a red signal. Kind of confusing, but uh, that's the trend for these next ones. Next up is a NOR gate. It's exactly the opposite of an OR gate. So if there's two red signals, it'll output a green. If there's one green signal, outputs red. Two green signals, outputs red. So next up, we have an X NOR gate or an exclusive NOR gate. This is the opposite of an exclusive OR gate. So it's really confusing, but if there's two red signals, it'll output a green. If there's two green signals, it'll output a green. If there's one green signal on either input, it'll output a red. It's the exact opposite of an exclusive OR gate. All these gates are really useful because they don't actually have buildings that are called XNOR gates or NAND gates. You're probably gonna be thinking it more of perspectives of, oh, this is an AND gate, but it's outputting a green signal when I want it to output a red signal. And you're just gonna throw an inverter on the end. But this is the setup for all the different logic gates just to have as an example. Here's an example of what it looks like when you use an automation ribbon going through a logic gate. You can see that it, com it compares the signals on specific wires and outputs depending on what those inputs are. So you basically just have to trace lines through the system. So automation systems can be used to enable or disable buildings. You can use them to operate mechanical airlocks without any kind of power, which is a really cool interaction that's used in probably 90% of automated systems and farms. And it can also be used to automatically open and close pneumatic doors, which is pretty useful because then you're not wasting duplicate time. Finally, a really cool thing that you can do with them, but it's not very practical. It's use them on pixel packs to make cool backgrounds for your base. The issue is, is that they come in sets of four and you can't do any bigger or smaller than that, which is kind of lame, uh, but they kind of function like drywall they give huge decor bonuses but because they're so big pixels you kind of need a lot of them to make any kind of pictures so they're not super useful here's this anime character that i drew and the cool thing is is that when you send a red signal it doesn't turn off the pixel packs it can actually be used to create a different image so you can see when i flip it to red yeah it's just something i made all right everybody that's gonna be it for this video if you guys like the content please like comment and subscribe everything helps and i really appreciate all the support guys thank you guys so much catch you on the next one